uh, sending orders for the disciples, for his apostles, for the eleven. Uh, he sent them off, and then that is the same, uh, that's the same mission that he gives the church in the book of Acts, and that's our mission today. Uh, we don't vote on it. We don't change God's mission of the church. This is the mission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. That includes Clarksville. That includes where you work. That includes your household. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We already did that today. Woohoo! And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the end of the age. The disciples were giving a, given a mission. It was a dangerous, subversive, death-defying mission. We, we forget that. When Jesus looked at the disciples and said, go and make disciples, go and, and, and make others like you are, when Jesus told them to do that, it meant their lives. They put their lives on the line every day to do that. And in the 2,000 years since Jesus gave this to his disciples, we've kind of watered down the mission of the church to, uh, hey, come sit in our chairs and we'll tell you how to be good. Blech. Right? We've taken the mission of Jesus, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And what we say is, hey, come to our particular place and we'll tell you how to stop doing a bunch of things that you like to do and how you need to start doing things that you really uh, naturally don't want to do. You're bad, you're bad, you're bad. We're good. We'll teach you how to be good. That's, that's wrong. Folks, that's wrong. We need to remember what the incredible call of God is to go, to go and to make disciples. The, the mission of the church of the Nazarene. We've, we've, we've taken Jesus' words and we've said that the mission of the church of the Nazarene is to make Christ-like disciples, which was the mission of Jesus, in all the nations. All the nations starts where you live, where you uh, go to work, where your kids go to school, your kids' soccer teams, uh, the people you run around with, your friends, your family, Clarksville, Montgomery County, Tennessee, the United States, to the ends of the earth. That's the call today. It's not, hey, get your friends, talk them into coming to church with you. Now, I want them here, unapologetically. I want people, I want more people to come. But that's not the mission of the church. It's not come, it's go. So I want you to turn with me two places this morning. Uh, stand with me, the book of Philippians. We're going to be uh, looking real fast at Philippians chapter 2 and Colossians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 2, about halfway through verse 12, says this. Continue to work out your salvation. Now, you know what workout means, right? You should. After all this eating that we've got scheduled in the bulletin, we need to do that. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, reverently, respectfully. For it is God who works in you. He's at work in you. Not just what he did, what he's doing. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. That's action. That's, that's movement. That's ongoing. And then in the book of Colossians, uh, Paul writes this in, verse, in chapter 1, in verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. See, when people pray a prayer, when people get saved, when people are baptized, that's not the finish line. That's the starting blocks. That's where we start. Paul says, since the day we heard about you, we've not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please.